Welcome to TPM Vids Disney Beat, where we talk about all things Disney. If you're new to the channel and like what you see, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when we upload a new video. You can also find us on all your favorite social media platforms. In the world of Disney theme park news, a lot has happened over the last few months. From attractions closing to brand new shows announced, new parades, construction progress, and big news for Tiana's Bayou Adventure, there is so much to discuss at Walt Disney World and Disneyland. So sit back as we count down 10 new attractions, updates, and changes coming to the Disney theme parks. Number 10. Over at Magic Kingdom, the animatronic bears at the Country Bear Jamboree took their final bow on January 26th. This was to prepare for the attraction's transformation into the Country Bear Musical Jamboree. In a Disney Parks blog post back in January, it was announced that the attraction will be reopening this summer. And they did mention the new show will include lots of Easter eggs. Now, the Country Bear Musical Jamboree will have the bears reinterpreting their favorite Disney songs in a variety of country music genres. And the blog post announced a familiar tune that fans may remember will be returning. Now, this can mean one of two things. It could be a song from the old show we just lost. My guess would be the Bear Band Serenade right at the top of the show. Or maybe it's a song from the Country Bear Vacation Hoedown, like The Great Outdoors. That would technically still be a Disney song. How great would it be if they brought that back? Now, the only song that's confirmed to be in the show is The Bear Necessities, which Disney shared a peek into the recording session at D23. Let's give this thing a try. We're rolling. One, two, one, two, three. Look for those bear necessities. That's how a bear can rest at ease. The simple bear necessities of life. In addition to new costumes, it sounds like they're also updating the animatronic technology, because in terms of fluidity, the animatronics weren't in the best shape when the attraction closed. My guess is that we'll see the Country Bears reopened around June, but stay tuned for official news from Disney. Number 9. Some big updates are coming to Star Tours at Hollywood Studios, Disneyland in California, and Disneyland Paris. On April 5th, new scenes will debut allowing the Star Speeder to take us to new locations from Andor, The Mandalorian, and Ahsoka which includes a visit to the planet Peridia. This is in addition to the 11 planets you currently visit. There will also be urgent transmissions from Ahsoka, Mando and Grogu, and Cassian Andor thrown into the mix. One of the best things about Star Tours is that you're guaranteed a different ride every single time. It's always a unique selection of the five different scenes. And now with these new additions, it'll allow for up to 250 different storyline variations on the attraction. These new missions also debut just in time for a season of The Force at Disneyland. And the good news is that they will be permanent additions to the attraction in Florida, California, and Paris. Season of The Force begins at Disneyland on April 5th, and that runs until June 2nd. In addition to the return of Hyperspace Mountain, over in Galaxy's Edge, on select nights, you can take in Fire of the Rising Moons. The firework view from the land is pretty stunning, and during the celebration, you can watch the fireworks lighting up the Batu sky, along with musical selections from John Williams' Star Wars score. Honestly, it would be great if this became a permanent addition, because it can get very crowded in other firework viewing areas at Disneyland. Number 8. Near the end of last year, Disney announced that Voyage of the Little Mermaid at Hollywood Studios would be reimagined into The Little Mermaid, a musical adventure. The new show is going to be based off the 1989 animated film, and it's going to feature a bold new set design that captures Ariel's imagination. This art depicts the new Kiss the Girl scene, which wasn't in the show before. Plus, many of our other favorite songs like Part of Your World and Poor Unfortunate Souls will still be included in the show. Now, The Little Mermaid A Musical Adventure is set to open in a refreshed animation courtyard theater in fall of 2024. 
And earlier this year, Disney released audition notices which gave us a couple more clues of what we can expect. This time around, Prince Eric will be an actual speaking role since it's under contract with Actors' Equity Association. In the original show, the performer was just lip-syncing to the pre-recorded dialogue. The audition notice also asked for puppeteers and released this new piece of concept art on the Disney Auditions Instagram account. It appears Sebastian, Flounder, and Max will all be back as puppets of some sort, and since Disney did confirm that Poor Unfortunate Souls was still in the show, I really hope that giant Ursula puppet is brought back. Now, the exterior of the attraction hasn't seen any changes yet, but apparently work is well underway inside the theater. Back in August of 2023, David Duffy, who was the VP of Live Entertainment over at Disneyland Paris, was brought to Walt Disney World in the same role. Disneyland Paris is known for their stellar entertainment, and I think we're about to see a resurgence of live entertainment at Walt Disney World. Over the past five years, live entertainment was always the first thing cut, so having David Duffy lead is just what Walt Disney World needed. Number 7. Pixar Fest is returning to the Disneyland Resort beginning April 26th, and Disney just revealed some new information of exactly what we can expect. So we got brand new concept art for Better Together a Pixar Pals Celebration, which is the new parade debuting at Disney California Adventure. It will be performed twice daily and will feature over two dozen Pixar characters. For the first time ever, characters from Luca will be making their Disney Parks debut in their very own float. How cool is this, even though the characters look a little off-brand? I thought more was going to be recycled from the Pixar Play Parade, but it appears Disney is putting together some new floats. Another new addition will feature Joe Gardner from Soul, accompanied by a group of live musicians. Now this is also in addition to the already announced Turning Red float that will feature all the boys of 4Town. Plus, there's even more. The grand finale will have Mr. Incredible and Elastigirl, Miguel from Coco, Mike and Sully, and Woody, Jesse, and Buzz Lightyear. Now in addition to Better Together a Pixar Pal celebration, Pixar Fest is offering even more. Over at the Hollywood backlot, once the sun goes down, you'll be able to find Club Pixar. There will be an interactive DJ dance party, live performances, games, themed food, drinks, and more. Then over at Disneyland, the Fantasyland Theater will be home to the Pixar Pals Playtime Party. See that five times fast. Here the whole family will be able to dance and play with many of the Pixar characters. And then to cap off your night at Disneyland, Together Forever a Pixar Nighttime Spectacular will also be returning to the park, this time featuring a couple new scenes. All of Pixar Fest will run until August 4th. Number 6 So last year, Disney announced that they would be spending $60 billion on increasing capacity for their theme parks and cruise lines. According to a recent investor presentation, it was revealed that $30 billion of that would go to Disney's theme parks and resorts all around the world. Disney stated that this money would go towards magical new experiences and refreshing existing infrastructure. This would definitely include the what-if projects at Walt Disney World like Beyond Big Thunder Mountain at Magic Kingdom and the proposed Tropical Americas concept to replace Dino Land at Animal Kingdom. Now, it was just leaked that Disney filed permits for an area at Animal Kingdom that will house trailers for Imagineering and construction teams. It also includes 363 parking spaces. With them setting up such a big area, something will definitely be happening soon at Animal Kingdom, whether it's the Tropical Americas concept or something completely different. Now, with the $30 billion set to be used over the course of 10 years, so many other projects will also come out of these investments. Now, over at the Disneyland Resort in California, an Avatar-themed experience was teased last year by Bob Iger. During an investor presentation, he said Avatar was still planning to come to the resort, but also mentioned it would be an Avatar land. We have one Avatar-based land, Pandora, in Florida. We're going to put a second one in, in California. It's still unclear where the land would go, but everything is pointing to Disney California Adventure. Now, another huge Disneyland project that's almost certainly going full steam ahead is Disneyland Forward. 
The project was first revealed in 2021 as a plan to extend the theme park offerings into this area of the resort. Each of the parks would essentially get an expansion plot, and although no exact IPs have been announced, some assumptions based on rough concept art have been made. There are seven proposed rides for each expansion, and on the Disney California Adventure side, well, this looks like a Wakanda land, and this looks an awful lot like Pandora at Animal Kingdom, doesn't it? Could this be where the Avatar experience ends up? I mean, we'll just have to wait and see, but the Disneyland Forward project is super exciting and it has a lot of potential to bring even more magic to the resort. Now, on March 11th, the Anaheim Planning Commission approved this proposal to now be voted on by the Anaheim City Council. That's set to happen on April 16th, and if it's approved, I could see Disney moving fairly quickly to get these projects off the ground. Number 5. Communicor Hall over in World Celebration at Epcot has been under construction for what seems like forever. I thought it would be opening at the start of the Flower and Garden Festival, but Disney finally gave us an opening date. Communicor Hall will open on June 10th, 2024, completing the Epcot overhaul. After almost five years, I think Epcot should finally be construction wall free. Now this footage was taken at the beginning of March and you can really see it all coming together. This side is going to be the Mickey and Friends meet and greet and you can see they were installing the mural panels that can be seen in the concept art. Communicor Hall will also be Epcot's festival support center. Plus on the side closest to World Showcase, this will be home to the Communicor Plaza stage. It'll host various live performances, and on June 10th, the stage will be home to a brand new Encanto sing-along show called Celebración Encanto. Encanto has been getting more and more representation in the parks, and this temporary show will feature many beloved songs from the film. Now thanks to another audition notice, we got a few more details of what we can expect. Mirabel and Bruno will be accompanied by two hosts, and based on the audition monologue, it sounds like this will be a smaller version of the Frozen sing-along at Hollywood Studios, in addition to having what appears to be some dancers. It actually kind of reminds me of what we used to see with the plethora of dance parties at Walt Disney World. I am all for more live entertainment, but Encanto seems to be an odd choice to open the brand new venue, but it is a temporary show. Celebración Encanto will be performed multiple times per day, and it runs until September 6th. Number 4. Next, let's head over to Disneyland's New Orleans Square. As you can see, the Haunted Mansion is completely boarded up, and construction on the new queue is well underway. This footage from Document Disney on YouTube was taken in the middle of March, and they have completely ripped out everything. Oh, and that also includes the plaza in front of the train station. Now, this is all to make way for an extended queue for the Haunted Mansion, as well as creating a new, but smaller and more quaint gardens area. Over here at the ride's exit, well, that's all been ripped out as well, because Disney is finally building a dedicated Haunted Mansion gift shop. It's still rumored there will be no regular Haunted Mansion this year, and when the attraction reopens, it will go right into Haunted Mansion Holiday. After seeing the extent of this project, I'm starting to believe these rumors are actually true. This year, the Halloween season begins on August 23rd, which is much earlier than previous years. Who knows if Haunted Mansion will even open in time for Halloween, so we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Number 3. Well, it's finally happening. Drones are coming to Walt Disney World. Beginning May 24th until September 2nd, a brand new drone show called Disney Dreams That Soar will debut in Disney Springs. Now, Disney said the new show will feature Disney stories celebrating the joy of flight, along with a soaring musical score and memorable movie quotes. There are quite a few stories that feature flying, like Dumbo, Peter Pan, Aladdin, Toy Story, and so much more. This new show is all thanks to having David Duffy at Walt Disney World. Seeing how he's collaborated to create drone shows at Disneyland Paris is a telling sign that this show will be very promising. I mean, have you seen the Disney Electrical Sky Parade in Paris? That show is stunning. Drones are capable of doing so much. Now, Dronesos, which is the drone company responsible for the shows in Paris, recently opened an office in Orlando. 
I would assume that they're also the ones designing Disney dreams that soar. And I mean, the lake at Disney Springs is the perfect location to offer more entertainment. It was only a matter of time until drones made it to Walt Disney World in a big way, and I think this show is just the beginning. Number 2 Construction on Tiana's Bayou Adventure at Magic Kingdom is well underway. Back in February, Disney did officially announce that the ride at Walt Disney World will be opening this summer. Disney also shared the very first look at one of the Tiana audio animatronics, and I think she looks fantastic. I'm so excited to see the other figures, but if we pause right here, you can see another animatronic is hidden in the back. Based on the hairstyle and clothes, it appears to be Tiana's mom Eudora. My guess is that she'll be used in the ride's grand finale, which is rumored to take place outside of Tiana's palace. Last year, Disney also shared this look at one of the Lewis animatronics, and he'll join Tiana and dozens of other animatronics on the ride. This includes an adorable band of critters that will appear multiple times, as well as Mama Odie, Prince Naveen, Ralphie, and many other characters. Late last year, Disney shared this look into one of the show scenes, but that is the extent of what we've seen for the interior. Now as for the exterior, when I visited at the beginning of March, all the scaffolding at the front of the mountain had been removed, meaning this section here is fully complete. You can see some of Mama Odie's bottles hanging at the top of the drop, and now with the scaffolding all removed, they have been able to begin testing the ride. That's right, the flume is filled with water again and they are cycling logs through the attraction like you can see here in this footage from DC Baker. Apparently the other day, they were circulating logs in the ride for about 7 hours straight, which leads me to believe that all the set pieces and animatronics inside are now installed. They're most likely entering the test and adjust stage. Now you can see that the Br'er Rabbit sculptures have been removed from the front of the logs, and pretty much nothing else has changed. At this point, I don't think a new hood ornament is going to be installed, and what we see is what we're going to get. In the grand scheme of things, everything is really coming together though. And this project here just proves how fast Disney can actually work when they want to. They're capable of moving pretty quick. Now over in the back of the attraction at the entrance, construction walls have been pushed further and further back, and they've even opened up one side of the pathway under the bridge. This really gives you a good idea of the look and feel of this refreshed area. I like how this section is secluded from the rest of Frontierland, and it looks like it's going to showcase a bit more of that New Orleans architecture. Everything is really coming together now, and we're making our way into the home stretch. Literally, we are now almost there. There are some people who are going to disagree, but honestly, you can't tell me this mountain doesn't fit into Frontierland. It's not like the entire thing is some desolate desert. It really looks like it belongs. I cannot wait to ride Tiana's Bayou Adventure this summer at Magic Kingdom. Number 1 Over at Disneyland, progress on Tiana's Bayou Adventure is a few months behind Magic Kingdom. Here in this footage from Document Disney taken in the middle of March, they were applying the faux moss to the rock work, but as of recently, they've also started applying the faux greenery and flowers. Tiana's Bayou Adventure is set to open here at Disneyland after Magic Kingdom, but just recently, Disney shared some brand new information regarding Critter Country. So we got concept art of two new retail locations opening in the land. The Briar Patch gift shop will be transformed into Ray's Berets, and only the left side of Pooh Corner will become Lewis's Critter Club. The right side with the candy shop will stay as Pooh Corner once Lewis's Critter Club opens up. Now, to prepare for all this work, Critter Country will be closing beginning May 1st. The only thing staying open will be the Hungry Bear restaurant, but everything else, including the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh, will be closed. Obviously, with the land boarded up, it will allow crews to work more quickly on this part of the attraction, getting everything transformed to welcome Tiana and that band of critters. Now, there is always this uncertainty if Disney would actually keep the Critter Country name for the land, but with these new details shared, it appears it's staying put. No details have been shared about a reopening date for Critter Country, but I wouldn't be surprised if it reopens well before Tiana's Bayou Adventure is actually ready. 
So, what new attractions or changes are you looking forward to the most? I'd love to know. Leave a comment down below to start a conversation, and don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video.